One year after the worst day of her life, Marissa Valdez's mom is sharing her daughter's story with Target 8 investigator Susan Samples, hoping it will raise awareness, prompt conversations, and save lives. I got older. Mom's got mm -hmm. younger. Then mom's got bigger. Then we have bigger. I just made a big mistake. Grand Rapids police are investigating another deadly shooting. Nobody could believe what happened. Okay. And what did you do? What's going on? I don't know. But where's my girlfriend? Oh, my. Is she there with you? Yes. What happened to her? I called Marissa my spitfire child. She was funny. She was really funny. She was loving and caring and great mother. How old are you? Four. I'm 18. Their mom, so devoted to little Amir and Amira, will never see them blossom. Marissa Valdez is forever 24. What do you tell the babies when they grow up? They know mom, I'm in heaven. What do you? What do you say about their dad? I don't even know what to tell them about them. You killed your girlfriend? Yes, I did. How did that happen? I was It was a hard man. I had my gun on the dresser, and she tried to reach, so I grabbed it, and she got shot. Delion Franklin initially tried to say as the couple struggled over the gun, he accidentally shot his girlfriend at least three times. But there was no evidence that Valdez had ever reached for the gun and no sign that the shooting was accidental, especially since Franklin unloaded a lot more than three bullets into the woman with whom he shared a home and two young children. He shot her nine times. Why would somebody shoot somebody that many times with their babies right there? 911 uh, emergency. You are sure she's dead? Yes, I am. I cannot believe this is happening right now. Police say nine 40 caliber bullets struck the young mother as her children slept within arm's reach, but theirs were not the only heartbeats in that room. She was pregnant. Oh my God. Not only did he kill her. <laughs> And she had my grandbaby. And the babies were in the room when it happened. Marissa was five months along with the couple's third child. For hours now, friends and family of the victim have been gathered on the other side of this apartment building. I said, I gotta get in there. I don't want her to be by herself. I need to be with her. <laughs> And the officer held me. She's like, I'm a mom, too. It's OK. You can't go in there. The police are, she's not by herself. I said, you please let me go. Abram spotted her grandchildren standing with DeLeon Franklin's mom. He had called his mother before 911. 911 emergency. So I run over there, and I grab both of them. And she just looks at me, and she's just crying. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, 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 If there were warning signs in the young couple's relationship, it seems everyone missed them. The pair had broken up and gotten back together twice, but Marissa never reported violence, not to the police and not to family and friends. At gatherings, Franklin often hung back, not used to a large, love-out-loud family like Marissa's. He was very quiet, but respectful, said Abram, and the family worked hard to include the man they called Day-Day. Day-Day that I knew, I couldn't see him doing that. If they would have told me at the time it was somebody else, that's what I would have believed. I wouldn't have believed it was him. So he fooled me.
The couple had lived together for four and a half years. Franklin mostly stayed home with the children, while Marissa worked full time as a medical assistant and dreamed of one day running her own online boutique. She took care of him, her babies, herself, kept a full time job, had insurance. She, and he never did anything. Why didn't he just shoot himself if he didn't want to be? around her. Franklin later told police he and Valdez had been under a lot of stress, had been arguing all the time about their relationship, about money. He said he felt like nothing he did was ever good enough for Valdez. He also mentioned that one of his biggest fears was not being able to see his children all the time, but having to pay child support. He mentioned too that Valdez and his mom, Franklin's mom, were the only two people in his life. At one point in his two-hour police interview, Franklin told detectives his life had been going crazy and he had felt, quote, something like demons on him. On the day of the murder, Franklin told police Marissa had become angry, was yelling at him and reaching for the gun he kept close by because he said he was paranoid about break-ins. Franklin told detectives that after the first shot, which he claimed was accidental, he blacked out and could not remember firing the next eight rounds. For a dozen years, Rachel Wussman has prosecuted domestic murders in Kent County, including that of Marissa Valdez. In the last couple of years, there's just been more and more domestic violence related homicides. Wussman calls it a crisis and says it's not getting enough attention, in part due to lack of awareness. It happens behind closed doors. When abuse escalates to murder, Wussman says it's common to find no documented history of violence. Everyone's kind of asking questions going, what, what was happening in that household before that? You know, were, was there things happening and we just kind of missed it? Wussman wants to normalize conversations about domestic abuse, which can be mental, not physical. She encourages you to ask friends and family about domestic relationships, especially if you notice controlling behavior. We missed everything. If there were signs, we missed it. Um, I just want to say that I'm sorry to everybody. You know. Delion Franklin pleaded guilty to second degree murder and assault causing miscarriage, for which he'll spend 25 to 50 years in prison. I definitely made an emotional decision, and I definitely have to live with it every day. You don't deserve my sister, and you never did. Marissa's brother, in a shirt honoring his sister, spoke for the family. I'm grateful for my niece, Samira, and my handsome boy, Amir. I'm thankful for them. But you, you scarred them for life. Your Honor, this man deserves the maximum years that he could receive for the nine senseless shots. Grandma's got you. By sharing Marissa's story, her family hopes to save other children from losing a parent, or, as in this case, both parents. I still wake up in the morning for that split second until I feel her babies right next to me because that's where they sleep. And then I remember she's going to miss out on so much. Nicole Abrams said she couldn't save her daughter, but she's hoping Marissa's story will prompt families to check in on their loved ones because the warning signs might not be obvious. Abram and her husband are raising Marissa's two children. If you or someone you know need help, call the National Domestic Violence Helpline at the number on your screen, 800-799-7233. I'm Target 8 Investigator Susan Samples.